going to be a complete no. Don't even waste your time trying to sell something like this. Can you truly make a body butter that won't melt at all in the summer months? Well, I want to test that out today. I've seen so many videos of people saying to just put it in the freezer and then ship it out when it's time or put it in those um, th those thermal packaging so that it stays cool when it, when it gets there. And I find that people still complain that the body butter has melted even when they get it. If you look at their customer reviews, it's saying that it's still melting. So how do we control the actual body butter without having to manipulate the packaging? Hi, my name is Nicole and I help skincare business owners and DIYers craft their formulas and develop fragrances. If that's something that you're interested in, then definitely hit the subscribe button. When you're a skincare business owner, the trickiest thing is selling body butter during the summer because you don't want the product to be melted by the time that they get it, or you don't want it to be sitting on the porch and melt by the time they get home. So you want to make sure that you have a product that is going to be heat resistant. And that's going to be like the biggest issue. Even if you do put it in the freezer, by the time they get it, it can still melt. Even if you put it inside of the thermal packaging, it can still melt. So how do we control the actual texture of the body butter and i'm going to be testing out a few different tests to see with these ingredients how we can combine them what can we omit to really make this body butter heat resistant so that when you ship it out you're not having these types of issues make sure you stick around to the end because i'm going to be sharing my full thoughts on the testing and to see how we can really get a heat resistant body butter Let's get right into this video. Now, when it comes to making a high melting point body butter, you really want to focus on the butters or waxes that you're using in your formula. You should have high melting point waxes or butters within your formula. So for example, you want to use um, shea butter. The shea butter is going to have like a really like thick, more like waxy, thick consistency versus like a mango butter that's going to be a lot softer in texture and it's going to um, melt very easily, just like Kapokua butter. I don't know if you guys used Kapokua butter before, but this is a really soft, very, very soft butter. And you can see how easy it is to scoop it out of this jar. It's very, very soft, even like on my hand, my arm, you can see how like, <clears throat> how soft it is it didn't take much to rub it in which is great but if you're trying to make something that's going to be like heat resistant then using such a soft butter is going to just be too soft and it's going to melt very easily and then you want to use like harder butters and cocoa butter is going to be a lot thicker and harder of a butter than cocoon butter i find so you would want to use that instead and then also using waxes beeswax using beeswax is a really great uh, wax to use. This is going to be really hard. Um, beeswax has a melting point of 144 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is going to really help bring up the melting point of your product, making it a lot harder for it to um, for it to melt. Now, the thing with beeswax is that it's going to be obviously waxy. So what this is going to kind of like tug onto your skin, and you don't want that type of texture on your body butter. So you're gonna have to counteract that with other ingredients and we'll get into that a little bit later. But first we're gonna focus on our first test. And the first test is going to be a body butter without any oils because I also find that having too many oils is going to also make your body butter melt a lot faster when you have you know, your thin oils that don't have any structure to them. At least with your body butter, you you have um, shea butter and mango butter or if you have uh, cocoa butter this is going to have structure it's going to thicken when it cools down and it's going to hold that structure against the heat by adding in the oils you are bringing down the melting point making it uh, you know giving it a higher chance to melt very quickly so to start off with we're going to have our body butter without any oils just um, butters and waxes. All right, so now to start off with our uh, body butter that's not gonna have any oils, um, we are going to start off with our mango butter. So I have mango butter here. I'm using a small amount of mango butter. And you wanna use these softer butters with harder butters. This is what's going to help. You don't wanna have a body butter that's just gonna simply have, you know, shea butter and that be enough or just mango butter because that is going to be too soft at such a high percentage. Then we're gonna have our uh, shea butter you're gonna have this at a higher percentage because it's gonna be a thicker, more waxy type of butter. Okay. Then I'm gonna be using cocoa butter. Now this is going to be a very hard butter that's going to help keep our structure, thicken up the product so that it's not going to be too soft. 
So I'm gonna add that here, and then I'm also using Capicua butter. Now this is a really soft butter, as I was demonstrating earlier. It's very soft, but at least with this, adding it with the, you know, with our beeswax and adding in, adding in cocoa butter and the beeswax, this is gonna help thicken it, but allow for it to still be a little soft in texture, so you're not having a hard rock of a body butter. So I'm gonna add this in. And again, you guys, we are just testing out this formula to see how it withstands with heat and i'm just going to take all of this and i'm going to put it on the double boiler now i still have our beeswax as well and i'm going to put this in a container to melt down by itself first with the beeswax this is going to again have a melting point of 144 degrees of fahrenheit so this is going to be a really high melting point but it's also going to be a bit waxy so adding in these other butters and that are softer as well is going to help to combat the beeswax um, and the waxiness but i still have a better formula for that as well so stick around because we're going to do that as well but now let's just put this on the boiler to allow for it to all melt now within this next test this is going to be using cooling to help influence the crystal formation in the body butter so this is going to be where we cool down the body butter we're going to whip it just a little bit and then put it back in the freezer to cool down some more and then heat it up a little bit and then put it back in the freezer. This is gonna help to build some crystallization and to help from the body butter melting. So again, we're just testing this out. So we're gonna see if this works when it comes to a no melt body butter. For the best way to get the best texture out of your body butter is to make sure that everything is completely melted like this. There shouldn't be any pieces of butters or wax in here. It should just be all one cohesive oil. And we're gonna add it to our freezer. So now I've taken it out of the freezer. You can see it's starting to solidify on the sides. And so I'm just gonna mix this together and I'm going to begin the whipping process. And I'm just going to whip this for a couple of minutes just to get a, a few, um, just a little bit of air within the body butter to help cool it down some more. And then we're gonna put it back in the freezer. I'm going to add it back into the freezer and just allow for it to cool down a little bit more because you just want it to, um, the point is to allow for it to melt down to cool it, put it back on the double boiler for a little bit and then add it the, and back into the freezer so it can kind of create like a crystallization so that it doesn't um, melt when it's in heat. So we're going to see if this is an idea that actually works. <laughs> So now for this formula, so I've had everything melted down and now I want to add it to the freezer so that it can fully cool and then we can begin to whip it. So we're just going to add this to the freezer now. Okay, so as you can see, this is like that body butter texture that we look for when we're like trying to cool it down. So now I'm going to add it to the double boiler for about two minutes because I want it to slightly melt down again. And I'm going to show you what that looks like and I'm going to put it back in the freezer. So let's put it back on the boiler. Okay, so now it's melted just a little bit. Um, you can still see it's still a bit creamy and it hasn't fully melted into like a full um, butter. I'm just going to scrape down the sides here. It still has a bit of its um, structure to it still. That's really what you want. You don't want it to fully melt down and be like a oil again. So I'm just going to scrape down the sides and put it back in the freezer. The whole point of this is really just to have like the temperature shock so it's going from being really cold to being a little warm and then getting cold again and it's supposed to help it from from melting now you guys this is just a test things that i have researched and trying to see what really works so let's just try this out okay so you want to mix it so don't leave like any clumps within it you still want it to be all one um like creamy consistency this allows for it to crystallize everything and not just little pieces of it being crystallized properly so you just want to make sure that you're mixing everything scraping down all the sides now i took it out of the um freezer again and you can kind of see like the crystallization happening a little bit you can see that there's like a little bit of um like clumps from it getting cooled down again so i'm just going to continue to mix it and then add it back to the freezer. I'm not gonna continue to whip it because I don't wanna add any air to the product. So now we're just going to add it back to the freezer for about 10 minutes. Now at this point, I've taken it out of the fridge again and I just whipped it up just a little bit. And you can see we kind of get this nice texture here. 
that we're used to when it comes to body butter. Now, I really just um, wanted to whip it just a little bit because I don't want too much air within the product itself because having something that's very airy is going to cause for it to melt still. So I'm going to just uh, leave the texture as is but it's still nice and a, a bit fluffy and creamy. Now, this formula is gonna be a bit more pipeable because you'll be able to actually whip this a lot better. And you still kind of get like a bit of a fluffy consistency. I mean, you still wanna not add too much air to this because again, you don't want it to melt. But the idea is for the beeswax and the cocoa butter and all of that to really help to keep the structure of the erotic butter for it to not fully melt. Now, besides using a high melting point butters or having in waxes, we are going to look at using thickeners and emulsifiers. Now, this is what we use to thicken up our creams, right? So let's see how this is going to work within the body butter and giving it more thickness and still having a more buttery feel without having to add that. <clears throat> and with these thickeners and emulsifiers, these are gonna have a higher melting point. I mean, these each have a melting point between 140 degrees Fahrenheit to 157 degrees Fahrenheit. So they have really great um, melting points and these are going to be really great to help keep the structure of the body butter and it will allow for it to stay thick without having to worry about it melting. So now within this formula, we are going to start off with our um, shea butter. This is just going to be a um, thick shea butter that we're going to use. Shea butter is a lot thicker than our mango butter, so we're going to add this in first. Um, then we are going to have um, cocoon butter. Now, I'm not worried about using cocoon butter instead of cocoa butter here because this is supposed to be a real test to see how the emulsifiers and thickeners are going to affect this body butter. So even if we use softer butters, it shouldn't matter. So I'm going to use cocoon butter here. Then I'm going to have in coconut oil. Now this is going to be ref um, unrefined coconut oil. And with this is going to be solid at room temperature. So you want to use something that is going to thicken up once they get it into their house, essentially, with it being cool. But when you think about the summer months, yes, it's going to be hot when it's outside, but once they get into their house, are they still going to be able to use it and have the coconut oil kind of help with loosening it up a little bit once it's um, a little bit cooler in the, in the home. So we're going to add the coconut oil. Then um, we're gonna add in jojoba oil. Now jojoba oil, I know I said we're not gonna use any oils, but with jojoba oil, this is actually going to be like a wax and it's going to help to bind all of your, um, your this is going to help bind your butters and your, uh, this is gonna help bind your butters and your emulsifiers and thickeners to allow for it to keep that structure and for it not to um, mess with the melting point. It's gonna help um, bind them. So using jojoba oil is going to be a good oil to use if you wanna use one in your body butter. Then I have a mixture of um, emulsifying wax. I have BTMS 25 and I'm using satiro alcohol here. Now this is going to be, play as emulsifiers and thickeners for our product. And it's gonna also still give the buttery like feel and consistency and texture without having the additional oil. So that's what I really love about that as well. And I'm also gonna be using stearic acid. Uh, I have a little bit more of this here than the um, other thickeners because this is a true thickener for your, uh, for your product and it's gonna have a really nice texture for it as well, giving it a more silky feel. Now we're going to take this and we're going to melt all of these down all together. Now for our product with just the stearic acid and your emulsifiers and thickeners, I just let it all cool down and then I whipped it slightly. I don't want there to be too much whipping to go on in this product. When it comes to your body butter, adding in a lot of um, air by whipping it is going to cause for it to melt a lot quicker because of the air that's incorporated. So honestly, at this texture right here, we can leave this and now you're gonna add it to your container. So you can kind of do more of like a melt and pour type of, of um, angle with this. Um, but you're not going to be able to really pipe this product. So when it comes to your products in the summertime, they're not going to be like a fancy two-toned color. 
also we're going to be using a double walled jar now i know what's great about the double walled jar so this is going to actually create some insulation from the heat it's allowed to help keep it cool so we kind of want to really make sure this works the best way possible when you're just using your thickeners and emulsifiers to allow for it to not melt so we're just going to use this and see if that really makes a difference with the melting of the product as well so there's the different elements that you have to consider okay, so now we have both of our tests here and I want to share the results and just what I think because now we're gonna have to look at the texture consistency of the product because that's really still important you still want to have a product that people can be able to use easily now to start off with the um, body butter um, that has the beeswax now you still have a nice creamy consistency with this even after it's cooled down you can still use your spoon pretty easily within it and it's still pretty fluffy and and creamy now to try this on a little bit it melts like pretty quickly on my skin i haven't even rubbed anything in yet let's rub it in it glides on really easy it's not very sticky at all so there's not like a lot of um, beeswax within this formula so that really helps and it just melts it really easily on my hand now when you really want to think about it you just want to know like how is this going to hold up it's coming from your house to the parcel to their house like is it going to really hold up and still have this nice consistency that we see here as the finished product is it going to still melt down and that's really a, another test that you can do is actually ship this out and see how does it react within the shipping time okay so now let's see the true test for the product that only had the emulsifiers and the thickeners now looking at our consistency this is really hard like, see how hard it is for me to actually even carve this out? It is a pretty hard consistency. Due to the fact that we did not whip this at all, like, it's just doesn't have that nice fluffy consistency that we normally like when with the body butter. So that is going to be not good when it comes to our body butter. I really do not like the way how, how thick this is. But let's see what the consistency feels like on my arm. So I'm just going to take a little bit of it. Let me see and it melts like pretty instantly that took much of no effort and rubbing it in it feels really good and very smooth so that can be a really big takeaway is using these emulsifiers and the thickeners to really give you a nice texture and it glides onto your skin nicely and absorbs very quickly it's not um, very oily so if you want to just get rid of um using too many butters and you want to get rid of maybe using cocoa butter you can use the like stearic acid you can use emulsifying wax to still get a nice consistency on your hand and on your body but as far as the way that this looks and the overall like the overall texture of it and like how hard it is this is going to be a complete no don't even waste your time trying to sell something like this because it's just not going to be good yeah sure it's going to feel nice yeah it's going to be nice on the skin but the overall look of the product and that's going to be the first thing that people are going to see this is just not it so don't even waste your time trying to sell something like this you're going to want to have to whip it and maybe adding in some more whips to this won't won't harm it much you'll still be able to have nice texture and uh, consist consistency on your skin and you can still whip it and it still have that high melting point because again these products have melting points of up to 157 so that's really great to be able to keep the overall um the, the overall temperature of the product up but to be honest and fair when it comes to this product for the second test it's still going to melt because it went onto my skin too easily it melted too easy which means that once it's out in the actual climate and it's really hot outside then it's more than likely going to melt yes these products do help yes it's going to raise the overall melting point of the product but it's still going to melt because of the heat and just because of how you know how easily these melt as well and you can even test this out by seeing when you were actually adding it to the double boiler the be like um beeswax takes forever to melt down but the emulsifying wax stearic acid those things melt down very very quickly so you really have to think about that as well so it may not melt down as much as the first product but it's still going to melt so if you really truly want to have a product that isn't going to melt you know, for the summertime you can still achieve a nice creamy 
and a thick consistency with a body cream that's a body butter and if you want to try out a formula like that then watch this video here and i'll catch you in the next one